Welcome back, sports gamers, for part two of our exclusive UFC 3 mini series with lead gameplay engineer Jeff Howard. This video goes over the brand new striking system, move combos, and the learning curve for players. Now, if you missed part one on the submission system, be sure to go back and check it out. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Sports Gamers Online for more great content. For now, enjoy. When it comes to any sort of fighting games, the Fight Night series had to figure it out. The old UFC series, when THQ was doing it, had to figure it out. Was to avoid it just becoming a button mashing where you just spam the same overhand punch 20 times and then you're guaranteed a knockout and there's no stopping you. You're spamming uh, a roundhouse kick. How do you find that balance to make sure that the fights actually can play out like kind of like a realistic fight like you see on TV and you're not really... You don't have to deal with people going online and just constantly button mashing and spamming. Right, it's a it's a really tricky problem because um, you want to you want to cater to all kinds of different audiences in the game, right? So someone who's never played the game before picks it up. You want them to have a nice kind of entry to the game of being able to press whatever buttons they want and get nice quick response and start to understand how the game works without having to understand all the details behind it. And at the same time, you don't want simple button mashing to be any kind of dominant strategy at all. So with UFC 3, um, we wanted to make sure as a baseline that there was a counter to everything. So if someone starts doing things in a very repetitive way, if you know the mechanics well, you can directly counter whatever it is they're doing if you see it coming. So um, that, that was kind of like a, a baseline strategy for us. And then adding adding stuff like the vulnerability system so that when you're throwing bigger, more dangerous strikes, you're putting yourself at more risk to try and balance, put, put a good balance between like someone who's throwing a lot of jabs and straights versus someone who's throwing a lot of roundhouses, make sure that the one who's throwing lots of roundhouses is punished a lot more. But it's all about the hard counters really, so that uh, predictability can be successful if mm -hmm. your opponent can't capitalize, but if they can capitalize, then uh, they force you to mix it up if you want to be successful. With with that in mind, there I know there's the stamina meter and things like that, and I, I've had it where playing online during the beta against people, they'll spam the moves, they'll think they're dominating, but then they run out of energy, and then one punch at that point knocks them out. Was that kind of a plan, too? Is that is that a, an actual design plan to, if you drain your stamina, you're going to be become more susceptible to getting knocked out and things like that, or easily submitted? Yeah, that was all very intentional. And uh, the the way I wanted it to play out was that, so if someone gets reckless and they, they overuse their stamina, they can still survive. So all their defensive options are still available to them. But if they start getting aggressive when they're at low stamina, they're putting themselves at increased risk. risk. So I, what I don't want is the the fight to just be about stamina battles. And as soon as you get a stamina advantage, uh, your opponent can't come back and win the fight. But I want stamina to mean something. So uh, one of the big pieces is uh, your vulnerability is hugely increased when you're at low stamina. So you're still able to defend yourself. But as soon as you take that risk and put yourself in a vulnerable position, if you get caught, the consequences are way higher than uh, if you had full stamina. So th those things are, are meant as uh, ways to uh, disincentivize people from just spamming and draining their stamina all the way down, but to still kind of keep the game balanced um, so that you can come back and compete from that uh, that handicap. When you're creating the game and you know, like when you're in a fight and when you're watching, the, the range of when you, of your attacks or your punches or kicks matter. If you're really close, you're able to get pretty much all your power into someone. But if you just barely hit them, they can tell you just barely hit them in the octagon. In the game, I kind of felt that same thing. If you're a little bit too far away and the tip of your foot hits them on a kick, it's going to feel and do a lot less damage than if you're close enough and you get the brunt of it. Is that, am I, maybe I'm imagining that I noticed that, or is that something that's actually part of the gameplay? No, that's very deliberate. So uh, we took uh, range management and range control very seriously when developing uh, this version of the game. Um, there's uh, there's several different strike ranges. So there's elbow range, uh, punch range, kick range, and step kick range. And every technique in the game is guaranteed to land if you throw it from the appropriate range. But then within ranges, 
depending on uh, how far you are when away when the strike lands, you'll get maximum damage if you're kind of at that ideal range for that particular technique, <laughs> and damage will be greatly reduced if you're uh, outside of that ideal range. So straight punches, uh, jabs and straights, um, front kicks, all have that ideal range kind of further away when the, the strike is fully extended. And tighter punches like hooks, uppercuts, elbows are all meant to be thrown close close up. So if you throw them from too far away, they're weaker. You want to get in tight in the pocket and, and land those up close. Moving on to how the game controls. It seemed, I don't know, for me, maybe it's just because you get used to it and then you get changes, but things like blocking. Blocking, a high block went from being R1, which many expect it used to be the R1 for high, R2 for low, things of that nature. Now it's the R2 or right trigger for blocking high and things. How do you develop as a team? What do you t do focus groups to for your control schemes or how do you decide to make changes to control? Yeah, um, the changes this year were kind of dictated by um, the feature set that we wanted to support, primarily the moving strikes. So it all kind of cascaded out of that. As soon as you need, as soon as you want moving strikes, you lose direction as a modifier. So now you have to find more modifiers on the controller to make up for that. And it just caused this cascade of changes on the controller that were necessary to support moving strikes. And once we got it into a place where we were happy with, and we iterated over all kinds of different uh, controller setups to see what we thought was best, uh, we do bring in focus tests and see what people think. Um, a lot of that, sometimes it, it causes changes in the controller scheme. Sometimes it just means like, okay, we're aware that people are going to have problems with this, this, and this. Those mm -hmm. are the things that we're going to need to put in tutorials or loading screens or really explain to people in, in videos leading up to the launch, stuff like that. One thing when games with combos, it's it, everybody goes, oh, well, now it's just going to become like a Mortal Kombat or Tekken or things like that. How do you find that fine line between making it easy to pull off these combos but not too easy but also not but basically making it uh, acceptable or uh, accessible i should say to pull off these combo combination moves or unique moves to each fighter as opposed to well you have to hit 30 different buttons and spin your controller up in the air right um so we wanted first of all there's like a base set of combos mm -hmm. that everyone has that are should be kind of the ones that you'd expect uh from a martial arts game MMA game, uh, like your one, two, one, two, three, like all the basics are there. So someone who just picks up the game and wants to throw um, standard boxing combos, uh, they can just do it and they don't have to memorize any list or anything like that. Um, UFC 2 had a combo system that was based on a set of generic rules. So you could go lead back with any strike up to a limit of, I don't remember, five, six, seven, something like that. And then there were some rules about going high, low, and kick to punch and that kind of stuff. But it was generally like you had the freedom to throw whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with that is um, we were getting feedback that fighters who typically wouldn't throw this particular combo were doing it to high success in the game. Um, Combos that are technically possible but not realistic were were kind of rising to the top of uh, uh, of the heap in online play because for whatever reason they happened to be good within the meta of the game but they weren't specifically built to be good yeah. in the game so we wanted to take more control over that kind of system so let's make sure if you can throw a combo in the game it's something that we have looked over and said yes that's a that's a valid authentic MMA combo that this particular fighter should be able to throw. And we took it as an opportunity to differentiate fighters. So um, your uh, kickboxers will have a lot more kickboxing combos. Your pure boxers will have a lot more pure boxing combos. And it, it, it allows us to differentiate fighters on the roster in a, in a way that we couldn't before. Um, and the combos are very easy to add to the game. So it's something that we could potentially expand on the, in the future if that's something we decide to do. But I, I, I'm not a big fan of all the critiques about being like Mortal Kombat and Tekken. Like, if you understand how MMA fighters train for real yeah. fights, they are training a very small set of specific combos over and over and over again um, to drill that into their muscle memory. And I think what we've built with UFC 3 really represents that well. Like You kind of have to train it over. And you got to train yeah. your... Yeah. You got to get it in your muscle memory. And if you want to do like a, a roundhouse to spinning heel kick combo, that is a lot trickier than throwing a one, two, three. And so you're going to have to train train yourself to do that. You're going to have yeah. to 
really think about when do I want to throw this combo? What am I going to have to do with my fingers? Is it going to leave me exposed? Um, I can see why people find it difficult, especially at first, but I personally really, really like the way that it kind of forces you to learn and play the game the same way that an MMA fighter would learn and train for a fight.